Hi, I'm Paris, and this summer, here in Central Texas, it has been incredibly rainy, which is really bad timing for us because of a leak in the roof over the living room caused both by our solar panels and squirrels. They're conspiring against us. It's gotten worse, and so we've actually had some water come down onto the ceiling of the living room. And with that, and with me remembering, oh yeah, what about the time that the garbage disposal under the sink broke and that sort of flooded? And then there was the time in uh, the master bathroom where underneath the sink that leaked. And I started thinking about mold. Which is always a concern when you have flood damage or leaks. And those companies that will come out and do a thorough test for mold, that gets very expensive very fast. So I wondered if there wasn't a DIY way of checking your own home for mold, both whether you have much growing in your house and is it the type that you really need to worry about that could affect your health. So I did some reading, some shopping, some investigating, and I'm about to start the process of doing my own investigation in our home here to see if we have a mold issue. So I thought you might wanna follow along in case this is something that happens to you someday. Those squirrels, starting out with what's in this box. Here's what I was sent from the Mold Check Company. Now this is just the first step. This is not a test that's going to tell me what kind of mold I have. Rather, in this box, there are 10 test sheets that you can put in different rooms of your house, um, up in the attic. Also, it's good to put one outside just to give you a baseline of how much mold there is around where you live. And there always is mold, so I think you're always going to find some mold running this test. But do you have an excessive amount of mold? Do you have a lot more mold showing up in your house than there is outside? I think those are signs you then want to worry about and investigate further. Just this kit, Mold Air and Surface Check Kit, is about $50 and this allows you to collect 10 samples basically. Again, this doesn't tell you what kind of mold you have, but you can either put these particular papers and a solution that will get the mold to grow so you can look and see about how much there is and maybe there's some more information you can get based on the color. I don't know that until I open it. But you can either set one in each room, leave it undisturbed until the time indicated and then see what you've got growing in there. That's your airborne mold and that's really what I'm most concerned about. If you're interested in this part of the mold check kit, I'll have a link to it down below this video. But um, today's video is going to be seeing what these look like, seeing what the instructions are and placing them and then I will follow up shortly and show you the icky results of what's growing on the test sheets and see whether I may have a problem here. Their informational pamphlet shows you all the various places water can get in and start a mold problem and it's just about everywhere. And then on the back, there's information on how to collect the samples, do the process so you can have an idea of how much airborne mold you have in your home. Now ordering mold test kits online, it's kind of confusing because sometimes they'll sell you the collection tools and it looks like, oh, this is much cheaper than other places, but it doesn't include the processing. No kit that I found is going to tell you the type of mold you have from a sample in your home just by sticking a Q-tip in it and putting it on some CSI little meter and it telling you what it is. All of them that I found, you have to send into a laboratory for analysis. So they will sell you the collection tools. Why they wouldn't include the the actual testing fee with that, I don't know, but it does make it look like there's a very low price for this kit. Um, seems to be somewhere around 50 to $60 is a reasonable price to pay for three of the laboratory tests. So they'll let you sample three spots in your house, send it in and you'll get the report on what types of mold are growing. And of course the type you really wanna worry about is the black mold and the toxic stuff that can really affect your health. More information in here. And then this kit for $50, you would think, well, you're going to get several um, analysis, but no, there's no analysis at all. I've been reading through the included literature about how this actually works and how to clean things up if you find mold. All very interesting. Now they give you these sheets. Let me show you this. 10 sheets and 10 little ampules to put mold food basically onto the sheets so that you'll get the mold to grow. Takes, looks like three to five days before you'll have sufficient results on the sheets to go and do your counting and then do your comparison. I had thought you just left this out for the several days, but no, you open up this sheet. There's a pl special plastic cover with each one. Expose it to the air in the location you wanna test for one hour. Then you bring it back and put um, the liquid on top of it, the mold food, 
and put the plastic cover over it and then you put all of them back in the shipping container they sent it to you in and that's the incubator and you leave it there out of direct sunlight and so forth just somewhere off by itself for a few days so it can grow what it's going to grow. They explain it all pretty well in depth here so I don't anticipate having a problem with that. It's really not that complicated. They also include the building investigator guide to find out where the mold is coming from. My favorite step in here was go up into your attic with the flashlight, hold on to a beam or support yourself securely, turn the flashlight off and look up. Do you see light coming through the ceiling? That may be a hole in the roof. You need to have that fixed. So, okay, good advice there. And then this lists typical steps for cleaning up mold um, in terms of things you have to absolutely get rid of and other things that can be salvaged and put a bleach water mixture or some other chemical on to get rid of the mold that's growing there. These are the ampules of mold food with the little spout on the end. You cut that off and then put the liquid on the paper once you have your mold sample collected on it. Sealed up in here are five sheets for testing. There's a second pack of five included. You can notice the grid in case you, I guess, have a lot of mold colonies and you want to count per grid or do some kind of an analysis like that, but let's hope that isn't the case. And then there's this plastic piece, which um, from what I remember, after you've put the liquid onto the paper and put the plastic sheet back over it, then I think you take this and press it onto there to spread the liquid around. And um, within that circle, I think the liquid should get your mold samples to grow. Just reading all this and realizing all the places you can get some water coming into your house, whether it's from the pipes already in your house or from outside or from condensation up in the attic, makes me want to go live in a yurt. But while I'm shopping for an affordable yurt to move into, I am going to give this a try. One last thing I wanted to mention, I thought it was a little funny. It's uh, mold spores, if you don't, the ceiling fans on in here, and we also have central air. I'll have to turn all of that off because for the sampling, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna stir up the mold. So they actually say to take a newspaper or a folded magazine because you put these on the floor, the lowest point, and where you're going to have them, you sweep with the magazine around back and forth to stir up the mold. Then you take this opened up and put it down on the floor and you give it an hour. And within an hour, uh, most of the mold spores, if the air isn't disturbed in the room, will settle onto the floor and you have your sample. As the kids, however, will start arriving home shortly and so much for not disturbing the air at that point, I think I'm gonna put off doing this till tomorrow morning once everyone else is out of the house. I'll follow along with the camera, show you where I put these and um, how it works to put the liquid on. And then we'll leave that for part one and part two will be when I actually see these with mold colonies growing. Ready for testing. Close the windows, doors, turn off the air conditioner, all the fans. Basically, it's very quiet here right now. These are the backs of my test sheets. As you can see, I've labeled them because otherwise you are never gonna figure out which one came from where. This is what they look like on the front with a little um, checkerboard pattern on it for counting mold colonies later on if you need to do that. And this is a plastic sheet over the surface. So you're what I'm going to do, peel this back and tape it back depending where I put it and leave it exposed for an hour and then come back close it back up like this, pick them all up because they should all be exposed about the same amount of time if I'm going to have a very good comparison to know where there may be mold, which room has more than others. And then I'll continue the process with the little ampules of the liquid that I'll put on each of these and press them out and then wait a few days and see what grows. Right now, let's go put the first one in place. I have picked a spot here in the master bedroom. I have my latest issue of Texas Monthly about Tony Romo. They do say to take a magazine or newspaper and to swish the air around so you stir up the mold, then put down your little mold check paper and uh, let the mold spore settle on it for an hour. So it's opened up and exposed now and the cover sheet is taped back and I'll be back in an hour for this one. I have one set up out here by the front porch. That's our outdoor control as it were, a little bit windy today. And I've placed one up here in the attic where it's gotta be like 140 degrees. Anyway, you can see it set right over there. See what kind of mold spores might be settling out of the attic. 30 seconds in the attic and I'm sweating already. Don't like it up there. I've placed all 10 of them. Took about five minutes to put them around the house and I'm either gonna go out for a bit or I'll just sit quietly somewhere and let the mold spores settle. Then I will collect them in the same order that I put them out to try to make up that five minute difference. So each of them will have about a full hour of exposure. It has been an hour. So now I need to untape this from the carpet and remove the piece of tape. 
close this over the surface here and I guess let it lie flat so it'll hold any mold spores in place and then place it into this container. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Okay. There it goes. Here's the very first test sheet from the master bedroom. This is a little ampule with the liquid in it. I'm going to cut the top of that off, lift this plastic cover up, squeeze it into the center of this, put the cover back down, and then with this, this will go on top and basically squish it, squish the liquid around in a circle for the pattern that they would like it to have. Sharpie is not required. I'm just using it so I can try to do this with one hand and show you how it works. So I'm gonna put, this has two squeezes, should empty all of this liquid onto this paper. There's one and two. Oh, it does beat up, doesn't it? Okay, there we go. Now let this fall naturally over that. There we go. Grab this so I can read the words. And it goes this way. Oh, why did I see it? Okay, and then press it down. All right, yeah, I see it spreading out. I didn't exactly get it centered, but it almost made it around to that edge. So three seconds, I don't think I quite did three seconds. Okay, take the plastic squisher off. Take this and put it into the incubator, which is actually the original package. Nine more to go. After going through all 10 of these, I felt like a lab technician. Not a very good one, unfortunately, because I got this little plastic dealy. I set it down upside down. Anyway, most of them are done correctly though, so we'll see what we get. First of all, in three days, I'm going to go back and check because that's when you start to see the mold colonies form. In the event you have a lot of mold, by five days the whole thing may be covered. And then you can't really count it and it may be hard to get a comparison. So they say to go in at three days and then check again at four and five, take pictures of them. So I will be doing those things and I'll be back soon here to let you know how it goes. From here it's a matter of deciding whether to take some of the samples and send them off for that additional fee to find out exactly what type of mold is growing. So this will take at least a couple other videos in this series to finish up. Keep checking back for those or you can click that subscribe button down below. You'll get notified when our videos go up. See you on the next review. What does the fox buy? Nobody knows. But before he goes shopping, he watches our videos.